Today, I wanna to look at this really aesthetically pleasing problem of, well, is there a right triangle where the side lengths are sine x, sine two x, and the hypotenuse has length sine three x? And of course, such a right triangle will exist if and only if the Pythagorean theorem relationship between the sides and the hypotenuse holds. So let's note what we want here before we jump into maybe the calculation. So what we want is that sine squared of x plus sine squared of 2x equals sine squared of 3x. Okay, well, that looks a little bit tricky because our arguments of sine are all different. But you've probably heard of a double angle formula. Well, there's also a triple angle formula. And well, let's maybe use this opportunity to derive the double angle formula, even though you may have it memorized, and the triple angle formula using a bit of complex arithmetic. So let's maybe recall that e to the i x is the same thing as cosine x plus i sine x. So this is Euler's formula for the complex exponential. But observe, that means that e to the i 2x is equal to, well, on the one hand, it's the cosine of 2x plus i times the sine of 2x. But then on the other hand, well, it's equal to this thing that's right above squared, which means cosine x plus i sine x squared. But now rewriting that, maybe bringing down the cosine of 2x plus i sine of 2x, and then, well, multiplying that out like it's a binomial, maybe arranging the real parts and the imaginary parts together, what we'll get is something like this. So cosine squared x minus sine squared x, that's the real part from this expansion, and then plus 2i times sine of x times cosine of x. But now we can simply equate the real parts, so cosine 2x and cosine squared, at, and cosine squared x minus sine squared x, as well as the imaginary parts. So we've got sine 2x, and then really we have 2 times sine x cosine x. Now, of course, we want the blue underlined equation for our purposes. So in other words, we have the sine of 2x is equal to 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. Okay, well, now that we've created a double angle formula, let's see if we can similarly create a triple angle formula. So using the same kind of idea that we did up here, we'll see that the cosine of 3x plus i times the sine of 3x, well, that's gonna be equal to e to the i 3x, which is the same thing as e to the i x cubed, which is the same thing as cosine x plus i sine x all cubed. But now we can, well, cube that, and what do we get? Well, we're gonna get something like cosine cubed x, and then next we'll have plus, let's see, three cosine squared x times sine x. So that's from squaring the cosine part and then just having the i sine part unsquared. But then we've got another term where we square the i sine part and then cosine is left unchanged. That's gonna be attached to a minus sign because we'll have i squared. So let's see, that's gonna be minus three times uh, cosine of x times sine squared of x. And then finally, we'll have i sine quantity cubed, which turns into minus i times sine cubed of x. So we've got something that looks like this. But now what we'll do is collect our real parts and imaginary parts. But now we could collect our real parts and our imaginary parts, but let's do that all at once. So we only need the imaginary parts. So over there on the left-hand side of the equation, it's sine 3x. 
And then over here, it's going to be 3 cosine squared times sine, and then minus sine cubed. So that's going to give us the cubic formula that we want. So we're going to have sine of 3x equals, so it's going to be 3 cosine squared of x times sine of x, and then minus sine cubed of x. Okay, so now that we've got these two formulas, our double angle formula and our triple angle formula, let's see where we can go from there. So on the last board, we landed at the following two kind of well-ish known identities. Now we could put these into our goal equation. So let's see. Over here on the left, we'll have a sine squared x from the first term. And then we'll replace sine squared 2x with this 2 times sine of x times cosine of x, but we have to square the whole thing. So let's see, squaring the whole thing is not too tricky. We'll have 4 times sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. But I'm going to rewrite that as 1 minus sine squared of x because we know that cosine is equal to, or cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared by the well-known Pythagorean identity. Okay, and then over here on the right-hand side of the equation, we'll have this object squared. So I'm not going to square that because we're actually going to have to multiply it out, and I think it'll be useful to have it over here on the right-hand side of the equation. That being said, I think pretty quickly we can put it all in terms of sine over here. So this ends up being 3 times 1 minus sine squared of x times the sine of x minus the sine cubed of x. But let's see. That's going to give us 3 times the sine of x. And then what is it going to be after that? It's going to be minus 6 times the sine cubed of x. So we've got something that looks like that. Okay, so let's bring that up here, and that's what we have to square. So let's see, we're going to have 3 times the sine of x minus, oh, that shouldn't be minus 6, that should be minus 4 times the sine cubed of x. And like I said, that's what we have to square. Okay. So now let's go ahead and maybe expand out this left-hand side, maybe collecting the sine squared terms. Observe that we've got a sine squared here and a 4 times sine squared here. In the end, that's going to give us 5 times sine squared minus 4 times sine to the fourth. And then, well, multiplying out this right-hand side, we're going to have 9 sine squared of x. And then let's see, after that minus 24 sine to the fourth of x by the cross terms, and then plus 16 sine to the 6x. So now what we'll do is maybe collect everything on one side of the equation. And what I want to do is move everything on the left to the right. And then we'll write it in terms of descending order of the sine term. So we have 16 sine to the 6 first. And then after that, we're going to have minus, look, it's going to be minus 20 sine to the fourth of x, because we've got this minus 4 that we're going to add into the 24. And then after that, what are we going to have? Well, it looks like we're going to have a minus 4 sine squared. So, sorry, a plus 4 sine squared of x. So we've got something that looks like this. Okay, so this is looking good. But let's observe that we've got a greatest common factor here, and that greatest common factor is 4 times sine squared of x. Factoring that out, we're going to be left with 4 sine to the fourth of x minus 5 sine squared of x plus 1. Now, let's observe that that leftover thing is really a polynomial, a quadratic polynomial, where sine squared is the variable. And we can actually factor this quadratic polynomial without too much difficulty. So let's see, a full factorization will look like this. We still have this 4 times sine squared of x. And now we're going to have 4 sine squared of x minus 1 times sine squared of x minus 1. 
But now we've got the product of really three polynomials, three linear polynomials in sine squared. This four sine squared, four sine squared minus one, and sine squared minus one. Their product is zero, meaning that one of them has to be zero. So in other words, we have sine squared of x equals zero, or sine squared of x equals a quarter, or sine squared of x equals one, just by moving some things around. But of course, this term tells us that sine of x equals zero, and then this term tells us that sine of x equals plus minus half, and then finally over here, this tells us that sine of x equals plus minus one. But luckily, there are all well-known values of x that make these equations satisfied. So over here, we have x equals uh, maybe zero or plus minus pi. Over here, we have x equals plus minus pi over six or plus minus five pi over six. And over here, we have x equals plus minus pi over two. And there you have it. Those are all of the values of x, well, between negative pi and pi, that make our original triangle most definitely a right triangle. And that's a good place to stop.